Hello, we're going to look at independent events. We mentioned them a little bit in our last video and, and a couple things earlier, but let's let's actually define what we mean by independent events and look at a couple of basic properties that they have. Now remember the definition of conditional probability of A given B is the probability that A given B is equal to the probability of the intersection of A and B divided by the probability of B. So this leads us to a multiplication rule multiply by both sides by probability of B and we get the probability of A intersect B is probability of B times probability of A given B. Similarly, probability of A intersect B is probability of A times the probability of B given A. Now it turns out uh, I'm going to give you four different ways of defining or or saying four different conditions any one of which of these could be considered the definition of independent events and then uh, it turns out if any one of these is true all four of them is true so uh, we could say it say it in words or informally more more or less is that two events are independent if and only if they do not affect each other so if having one thing happen doesn't have any effect on the next one that's an independent event so I flip a coin and then flip it again. The second flip doesn't have anything really to do with what came out, uh, what the outcome was of the first flip. That's so those would be independent events. So if you can show that the probability of A given B is the same as just the probability of A, then the two events are independent. Likewise, if you can show that the probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B, with no other information then that is in they are independent events A and B are. Or if you can show that the probability of A intersect B is probability of A times probability of B, that is enough to say that they're independent events. So I'm going to show you that these three conditions here are actually equivalent to each other. Okay, so let's start with the probability of A given B equals the probability of A. Now what would the probability of the intersection be? Well, in general, the probability of A intersect B is the probability of B times the probability of A given B. But if probability of A given B is probability of A, then this is probability of B times probability of A, which could be rewritten, of course, as probability of A times probability of B. So we show that the uh, this condition here, uh, of these algebraic conditions, the first one implies the third one. Okay, and similarly, uh, B given A is the probability of B. Well, again, the probability of A intersect B is can be written this way, probability of A times the probability of B given A, and again, probability of B given A is probability of B. So again, that turns out to be probability of A given B. So if you have either one of these first two, you get the third one. So if we can just show that the third one gives us the other two, then we see that any of these means any one of these conditions means the implies the other two. So if we start with this, the probability of A times probability B is the probability of the intersection. Let's suppose that's true. Well, on the so we have the probability of A times probability of B on the left. Well, we know in general that the probability of A intersect B is the probability of B times the probability of A given B. Now just divide both sides by the probability of B and we get probability of A equals the probability of A given B. So we just showed that the third one is the third one's true, then the first one has to be true. Similarly, we can say the probability of A times probability of B is probability of the intersection. If that's given, then we can replace the probability of A intersect B as probability of A times probability of B given A and divide both sides by probability of A. We get probability of B equals probability of B given A. And so what that does is shows that the sec third one implies the second. So basically, <coughs> we've just proved, just using the definition of conditional probability, that if you have any one of these conditions, you have the other two. So any one of these can be considered what's meant by conditional pro or, or independent events because they're all equivalent. They all basically mean the same. So with independent events, A 
If A and B are independent events, knowing that B occurred tells us no additional information about the probability of A occurring. So the probability of A given B is still just the same as the probability of A. Knowing that inf extra information that B occurred does not change what the probability of A is. Now, mutually exclusive events are something completely different. Mutually exclusive events, remember, are disjoint sets. That's So if you know that A occurred, then B cannot occur and vice versa. So the probability of A given B is actually zero, and that's probably not the same as the probability of A. So mutually exclusive events are, are most definitely dependent events. And some, some students will get these two uh, concepts confused. So mutually exclusive events are never uh, independent events.